Noon. Noon. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for kind of making it back from lunch on time. That way we can get started. I appreciate that extra effort. Um, I want to go back to our parking lot. Um, this morning, we had really started to dig into some of the manager things, the things that you were going to have to do to um, interact with associates and some of your um, new duties as far as feedback and evaluations and performance um, goals and things like that. And we went ahead and parked um, one particular um, topic, which was feedback. And that's where I want to go um, today. And because I had this great, well, I think it's great, um, a fun tool that I think you'll find very effective. Now, <clears throat> if you could go ahead and flip the next slide for me. And I've got um, Lorena helping me with the slides so I can stay up here. The method I'm going to teach you is the sandwich method, the feedback sandwich. And so I brought you this lovely sandwich that has been kept refrigerated. <laughs> um, but this is really a representative of the type of feedback and how we're going to structure that. And it might sound kind of funny, but once we sort of um, define that, I think it will make a lot more sense. The sandwich itself represents layers of information. So it's not that you're going to dump everything in a pot and hand it to somebody. You're actually going to create layers of information that make sense. But the making sense part is that there's structure. You don't put the lettuce and tomato on the bottom. You put the bun or the bread or the tortilla on the bottom to provide foundation. And then you always top it off with something so they can hang on to it. So the sandwich represents layers of information and structure on how you put that together. Now, the next thing that I want to talk about is the actual objectives that we're going to cover. So if you could hit the slide one more time. So these are objectives by doing this small presentation that we hope to accomplish um, when we're all done. One is that we will be able to recognize feedback opportunities for evaluation and corrective communications. Second, we'll be able to identify the feedback sandwich method as an effective communication tool. And lastly, we'll be able to utilize the feedback sandwich method, and we're actually going to do a practice right here during the, the presentation. What questions can I answer about the objectives if you have any? <clears throat> we're all good? Okay. <laughs> do we get to eat the sandwich afterwards? You're more than welcome. <laughs> we'll be done in just 20 minutes. <laughs> okay. So the next thing that I want to go over, and if you could go ahead and hit the slide one more time, is I want to go back and I just want to review the term <laughs> feedback just a bit before we jump in. And we've already identified that we're talking about feedback as communication. Specifically, when you need to talk with a group or an individual about evaluation or about corrective things that need to happen. Or things that, more goal setting that needs to happen. But you know me, I had to Google it. So um, I wanted to make sure if there was anything else I needed to include in that. So my Google search gave me learned one, new one. My learned one was that feedback probably originated in industrial terminology. That with big machinery that was automated, that required not very much human interaction, there was actually what was called a feedback switch. And when that became engaged, then it automatically corrected an error in quality, timing, or production. So what a great analogy. That's a positive analogy. We like our feedback to be engaged and create automatic correction. So I love that one. The second one was the one I knew, and it's feedback noise. So when you're listening, you've got two mics too close together, or you're trying to do um, a radio broadcast and somebody's on the phone with the radio on at the same time, and you hear that screech. It's annoying. It's not, you don't like it, you want it to end. And so, again, I thought that was a great analogy for what you don't want to happen in your feedback. You want it to be welcome noise, not scratching on the blackboard kind of thing. You don't want the person you're talking to to make a face, and you don't want to be annoying. So my Google search, I think, turned out pretty good because it gave us a great positive analogy and a pretty good negative analogy. And so there, I think that probably all of you, have, have all of you heard at least of two of those types of feedback before? I think so. The industrial one kind of got me a little bit. Okay. So now we are going to um, talk just a little bit about where feedback happens. Feedback happens all day, every day, everywhere you go. And I want to make sure you identify that there's a lot of feedback that's not quite as 
structure as a feedback sandwich. So how many of you have ever played sports? Okay, can a, a couple of you share where <clears throat> feedback happens within sports? If you mess up on a play, then you're going to get that feedback from the coach. Yeah. may not always be positive. <laughs> okay, but it's pretty immediate. Mm -hmm. Okay, it, what about something positive when, we, when you're on sports? Right? How many of you do high fives? Oh. High fives, mm -hmm. quick and easy. It's nonverbal. Mm -hmm. High five. Okay, how many of you have children? Do you give your children any feedback? What's something quick and easy that you could tell me that some kind of feedback with your children? When they do something right, I acknowledge it right away. Mm -hmm. Right, and, and do you thank them or praise them? I thank them for doing the right thing. Absolutely. And then sometimes it's negative feedback, right? What were you thinking? <laughs> That's feedback. Do your children ever give you feedback? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I bet they do. Have you gotten any feedback from your kids lately? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, negative or positive? Negative. Yeah. I think my son asked me the other day if I was talking back. <laughs> so, you know, what comes out of their mouths, you know. Okay, so feedback happens all the time. Another one that I hadn't thought of happened yesterday. A teammate of mine um, got passed a certification. It was a really big deal. So the manager sent out a note to the whole team, and what happened? Immediately. Everybody hit reply all. Congratulations. Way to go. Yeah. That was all feedback. So it happens everywhere and we engage in that all the time. Okay, so let's go on to the feedback sandwich specifically. Okay, so one more slide. Now, I'm also going to pass out a handout at the same time. Could you take those and pass them on for me? And I'm going to do kind of a high level overview right here and give you some information about each of these components of the sandwich. And then we'll kind of do a teach and practice together using your worksheet. Feel free to make as many notes as you want, but there'll be a couple times when I ask you to do something specific when we get to the next slide. Now, even though this sounds kind of like a fun, maybe even a silly kind of method, it is widely used in academic settings, and it actually is widely used in a lot of corporate settings. So the feedback sandwich is not something silly. It's not something I made up. It's really a practical tool that's been um, handed down in, in many various different kinds of places um, with employees and and places relevant for giving feedback. Prepare. You need to have an idea of what is it you're trying to accomplish, who are you going to be talking to, what information do you want to relay, and what outcome are you kind of looking for. So whatever you need to accomplish that is the first step. Remember, we're going to do more detail in a minute. Compliment. The compliment is actually represented by, represented by your bread or your bun or whatever is holding your sandwich together. So the compliment is the bottom foundation, and it can be anything positive. And we will talk about that a little bit more as well. Coaching, everything in between. It's the meat, it's the condiments, it's the veggies, whatever that is. And again, that will vary on what's the situation, who are you talking to, what outcome are you trying to achieve. Encouragement, top of the sandwich. It's what's going to hold it all together. Encouragement means that you have given them the actual tools that they can use to accomplish what you've asked of them. You've given them resources or ideas to use. And you've also shared confidence that they can do it. The follow-up. This isn't really part of the sandwich. It's sort of the hostess with the mostest aspect. You have provided information to them. You have given them something you want them to use. And you need to check back. Is that making sense to you? Is there anything else I can do to help? So that kind of follow-up. It's not your routine one-on-one -on -one or your um, annual review. Any questions so far or what questions might you have? <clears throat> How long should I wait before I do the follow-up? That's a great question, and I'm going to be honest, Marcia, it's going to all depend on the situation. It needs to be long enough that they've had time to think about it, possibly try to reach out for some of those resources, something measurable, but not so long that it's sort of lost its credibility on, on the topic. Thank you. How much information do I need to include on the coaching portion? I think that's a great question, too. Why Can, can we hold on to that for just a second and talk about it when we do details? Because I think how much... It's going to be very individual. Okay, so I came up with the whole idea that we would use these. Um, I actually tore off the uh, 
flip chart so that we have individual categories. So it's those actual individual categories that we have up here. You want to do one more slide? And there I've shown you the same pictures. So the table is all spread out. There's all of your ingredients. The bread is the foundation and the top. All the stuff in the middle. Um, the encouragement, again, the bread on top. And then the follow-up is the actual what can they hold on to? What can they take a bite of kind of information? So prepare. And this is going to be kind of a just shout and share. I'm OK with that. So I kind of give you an overview of what kinds of materials might you need to gather um, to do any kind of feedback with your particular team? Quality, of course. Quality, OK. What else? The facts. I think you want to prepare the facts before you go to input. Would you use actual examples of their work? Definitely, you know, regards to an associate. OK. Who else? Rails? All kinds of things fall in this category. Audit results, test scores, training information, training evaluations, peer reviews, um, customer service feedback. Anything can pop into this element and it makes you, again, prepare. What, who am I talking to? What information do I need to share? What outcome am I hoping for? And do I have relevant information for this person? That's prepared. Okay. We're going to start with the bun, the bread, the tortilla, the big lettuce wedge, which really never appeals to me. And so, but we're going to create a foundation. And this is where we need to give a compliment. Now, I want to clarify something first. This is not intended to sugarcoat bad information. This is not intended to soften the blow. This is truly a challenge on both sides of this communication. As a manager, you need to recognize that even your weakest associate still does something right, still has positive qualities, they wouldn't be on your team otherwise. So it challenges you to keep that mindset. Really, that's the best way you can help them is to have some sort of balanced point of view with them. On the other side, it really engages them. It knows you're paying attention. It knows you're not just looking to find out things they did wrong. They know that it's not all about the negative and how I'm dragging down the team, it really engages them if you start with the positive. But it's real, it's realistic, it's not made up, it's the real deal. So, what's a valid compliment? Anybody can come up with an idea? I can tell from the outcome of this that you put a lot of work into it. Mm -hmm. It appears that you put a lot of work into this product. Okay, very good. And you know, that might bring up a good point. Maybe instead of thinking about all the different associates that you work with, because it's we're all over the place, why don't we sort of focus in on, why don't you think about the things that would apply if you were doing a feedback sandwich for me on this presentation? And then we can kind of focus on how we'll go. And again, I'm not really scooping for compliments, but that way we're all talking about the same situation mm -hmm. and we're kind of comparing apples to apples. Mm -hmm. So on your paper, along with your notes, if you can think of a compliment, a way to start a feedback sandwich for me and this presentation. And you'll have a little bit of time at the end, too, if you're not, if I haven't wowed you yet. Okay. So the next piece is the coaching. And, oh, here, we didn't do this. It's any positive, and it's real. We can go with those details. So the coaching, this can, again, be, it can be a goal that's for the group. It can be a personal goal. It can be a target. It can be a score. It can be anything. Now, I also want to point out that not all sandwich middle is negative. You may have a top quality performer who hits it out of the ballpark every single month. You need to be able to coach them also. And what you need to look at is, are they working on laddering up their professional skills? Are they accepting challenges such as being a SME on a project? Have they taken the preceptor course? So you need to be able to coach your best associate as well. So again, let's lose the, if you have that attitude, make sure you don't focus on that feedback has to be something about negative results. Okay, so again, what would you coach me on? What would you prompt me on? Still, if I did something good, how could I improve that? And think about this presentation. And again, I'll give you a, couple, a minute at the end as well. 
encouragement. You're going to provide them tools, resources, actionable steps, and confidence. I've seen you do it before, I know you can do it. This is a great team, you're a strong member. I absolutely trust the fact that we're gonna get right where we're headed, we're gonna have a great quarter, keep up the good work, whatever fits. Try to treat each people, each person as an individual. That makes a big difference too. So that would be the bread on top of the sandwich. So now you have provided with compliment, coach, and encourage, you've now built your sandwich layers and structure. They can hold on to it, they can take a bite of it, it's manageable. That might answer how much. You don't want it to be so much that they can't focus on anything. They don't, you don't want it to be so little that it feels very, very pinpoint finite. So, so somewhere in the middle that seems manageable. <clears throat> but I think, I think you don't want to build a dad wood. <laughs> you know, one well, of those great big fall over the top. Does that help? Yes. Okay, that makes sense. All right. The final one, the follow up. Again, this is something that is, we're going to call it immediate, but it doesn't mean like five minutes from now. But immediate in the scope of the information that you've provided. It's specific. And you ask if you can help. And that way, they know that that wasn't a one-stop check mark, you're done, you're still engaged, you're still thinking about them. Your part of your job is help them be successful. That's part of how that goes. So now we've kind of covered all the steps. And I want to ask how you felt about applying this idea to evaluating me. And if you need like a few more seconds or, or so, minutes, not minutes, but a minute, go ahead and take some time. The good news is I'm not going to make you read them aloud, <laughs> so if you need to be very coachable, that's fine. But that way we're all talking about the same thing. In doing that, what other questions can I answer, specific to using the sandwich method? I always take that as good, but I know, I know there still may be a couple. So let me address, Ebony, go ahead. So when doing a giving feedback, practicing this method, mm -hmm. is there any form that it's better done in? Like, am I safe to do it via email, or should it be more of a conversation that I have with my person that needs to be addressed? Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna take um, a, a bit of a, a back on this, and the fact that I think your business model may dictate some of that, like what's required and how do you do it. And I think as you become more comfortable, I'm going to say there's some that's very appropriate for email. And then I think that probably the more that the more challenging steps are, like how challenged your associate is, might call for more of a one-on-one. -on -one. So I think probably the degree of the change you're asking mm -hmm. for might mm -hmm. dictate the one-on-one -on -one okay. portion. Two words that I'm going to ask you to kind of just leave out of your vocabulary. Certainly in the sandwich method, I wouldn't care if you left them out altogether. First one is but. The but is the delete button of the English language. People will not hear anything that happened before that word. You have a great dress on, but nobody's going to hear the rest. The second one is the word should. You should do this. You should do that. Everyone should do this. You know, there is kind of a joke that they say you can should all over yourself if you get going. But it also feels parental. And if you're not pointing your finger, most people feel like you are. And I think sometimes people feel degraded by shoulds. Like there's only one answer and you've got it and I didn't. I say get rid of that one too. So those are my two hints. Good question. On the follow-up, ask if you can help. If you do offer assistance, do you later uh, review if they follow those steps and correct the action? Certainly. It doesn't mean you only follow up once. But again, I'm thinking that that might be sort of the midpoint before you come back to a more formal feedback situation. Now, we're going to wrap this up by just a quick show of hands. 
Because I did say I wanted you to understand it and I wanted you to see, find it valuable. So how many of you um, are able to see how this communication tool could be used in your own world? <laughs> oh, great. That's 100%. Okay. And how many of you um, feel comfortable that you might, you might actually use it? Not that you see you could, but you might actually use it. Mm -hmm. I'm loving it. I'm loving it. Thank you so much for your time. Um, this will be a stepping stone for many other topics we're going to cover as managers, so this becomes part of your toolbox. And thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.